What's up, what's up, you guys? Welcome to another episode of The Crystal Crawford Show. If you notice behind me in the video, you see the remnants of my workday. <laughs> that island is officially my office. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so glad to talk. I'm just going to give you a full view of the the dirty mayhem. Um, welcome, you guys, to this episode. So this week, you guys, Mother's, Mother's Day is coming. Did anybody notice? Hi, Alina. Hi, Paula. Hi, Aurelia. Um, anybody notice Mother's Day was coming? I totally forgot. Hi, Betty. And um, so I'm going to do a call. You're invited because we're going to clear some shit. We're going to actually create some space for us, those of us who want more space around moms. But I thought I'd jump on here today and um, answer, like not answer, talk about some of your questions. Um, I ask every week if you guys, uh, if you guys are not on my email list, you can jump on. And every week I send an email and then I ask you for your questions. Hi, Lene. Hi, guys. Nice to see you. And it's such a gift to me when you send in your questions because it actually lets me know kind of the general sense of where everybody's at. Now, of course, everybody's in a different place with their mom. I know people that have an amazing mother. I know um, all that, all of that. But if you guys know anything about me, you know that I have had quite the run, quite the history with my mother. And I would say this year, hi, Maruna, nice to see you. Uh, hi, Kristen, Kirsten. Sylvia, hi Cece, hi Claire. Um, this year for me has been the most peaceful that it has ever been between me and my mother and it's the changes that I've made. And so I called this show, What If Your Mother Never Had to Change to Be a Gift to You? Because my mom hasn't changed almost at all. She's almost exactly the same person that she's always been and yet I have so much more ease. And this topic is so broad and it covers so many different things because there's so many different places where we're being our mom, where we're resisting being our mom. Like, are you being your mom in business? Are you being your mom with money? Are you being your mom in relationships? Like, there's so many different facets to this and this show will only touch on a tiny, tiny bit, but I wanna invite you to a one call with me that you can find on my website, crystaljoycrawford.com. It's only 77 bucks. Like, jump in there if you know this is your thing. And also just, just tell you that there's that this will touch on a little bit but there's so much more to this okay so the first thing i want to just i have so many questions i'm looking over at my computer i'm going to jump into those in a minute but what if your mom never had to change to be a gift to you what if nobody ever had to change to be a gift to you i just had a, a conversation with my friend stephanie who is going i mean she and i are always like changing things and opening things up and one of the biggest things that's changed for her is she was realizing how many projections and expectations in, in her way that she was doing on certain people that they had to change, they had to be different. And it's really interesting being in a friendship or a relationship with somebody who's really expecting you to change because the one thing you have to do when they need you to change is you have to resist them. And, um, and so, so that's just interesting. And a lot of us that get into these tools, into these access consciousness tools, into self-help, into all this stuff that we're doing for ourselves, side by side to that, develop and create and have these projections and expectations that everybody else is gonna want these tools, that everybody else is gonna wanna change, that of course they're gonna wanna, and we're expecting them to change, of course they're gonna, which then creates all this weird shit between us and the other people in our lives. So I'm gonna start talking about this from the perspective of your questions and let's see where we go. You guys ready? All right, so the first question that I got in about this topic is, oh, so many, there's so many. So first question, what is it gonna to take to not compete with my sister or my brother? <laughs> this is such a broad topic. I'm so glad I'm doing a call on this. What is it gonna to take to not compete with my sister or my brother? They will, of course, have presents or flowers or both for my mother. Y'all know Mother's Day is coming up. It's a whole thing, right? I don't like to have, I don't like it. I don't like to have to prove that I'm good or even best and be in competition with them. All the projections and expectations, I can't stand it anymore. What can I change to have more ease with this? Okay, I'm gonna give you short answers and then I'm gonna extrapolate. Are you guys ready? You guys ready for the hard, hard knocks? hard-hitting short answers for these 
all the projections and the expectations, I can't stand it anymore. What do I need? What can I change to have more ease? Here's what you need to change. You gotta be willing to be interesting point of view. Now listen, everybody in your family is functioning from wherever they're functioning from, y'all. Everybody's got their own agenda in your own family. Everybody's got their own things going on. Everybody's got their own oaths, vows, swearings, fealties, co mealties commitments, and pacts to each other in each lifetime. We've all slept with, you, slept with each other, been each other's mom, been each other's kid. There is so much energetic shit going on in families. It's crazy, okay? That's why Gary and Dane are actually doing a specialty class called Family. Did y'all know that? Everybody's y'all today. <laughs> Apparently, I'm in the South. Hi, Bronwyn. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Camilla. So, so let's say your brother and your sister come in to holidays and they're doing competition. That does not mean you have to. Okay? Chapter two in the 10 keys to total freedom is all about interesting point of view. And when you're truly being an interesting point of view, where everything is just an interesting point of view, they come in and they're doing competition and that's just an interesting point of view, guess who has peace? You! <laughs> so every single point of view that we have, see, so, so you come into a family thing and they walk in and they're being an energy, right? They're being all this proving and competition. Let's just say it's just them that's doing it. And you're aware and you pick up on it. So if you don't acknowledge that you're aware, if you don't acknowledge you're picking up on it, if you don't acknowledge that that's just interesting, guess who gets to resist and react to it? You do! Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. So what do you do? You adopt interesting point of view. I have this point of view as your fucking favorite tool of all time, it's what you do. So I have so many stories about how I've used this with my mother, but at one point my mother was called interesting point of view in my phone. So she would call and it would say, interesting point of view is calling. <laughs> Because I could, I did not seem to be able to unhook myself from the feelings that she brought up in me every time she entered my world. Now, I didn't, wasn't really willing to acknowledge that all the feelings she brought up in my world were my choice at the time. It still felt like she did this and this occurred in me and it wasn't my fault. Like it didn't, I didn't get the choice part of all that. But okay, fine. So I had to just start where I started. And you're gonna just have to start where you start with all this family stuff, right? Interesting point of view, I have this point of view for every feeling, every thought, every emotion, every point of view that comes up. So use this holiday. Use the shit out of these holidays. Listen, here's my weird ass point of view. I have the point of view that holidays, partners, dating relationships, businesses, and money are actually all hidden disguises for facilitating us into more interesting point of view. It's all just a ruse. <laughs> Hi, Dialena. So if you can use the, the situation, use it. Use it to create more space for you. And that's what I started to do with my mom that actually created so much freedom for me. I got that she was never gonna change. I got that my brothers and sisters were never gonna change, unless they did. But what I did get is that I could change the way that I responded to them if I was willing. Now that took a minute because I, there was a lot of places I wasn't willing. There was still a lot of places as I went through this whole thing where I really still wanted a lot of control. I wanted my projections and expectations to be true. I wanted to control her into doing things my way, which by the way, is a very superior asshole thing to do. I am very good at being a superior asshole. <laughs> So it took me a minute, but interesting point of view, I have this point of view was literally my life-saving tool with my family. So that is what I would say to that one, all right? Okay, then we're gonna move on into Rebecca's question. I'm so excited. So, um, so she goes, as a mom myself, I don't make a huge deal out of Mother's Day. Oh yeah, if you guys have a friend that you know would love this video, tag them, that's brilliant. So as a mom myself, I don't make a huge deal out of Mother's Day. And yet I find myself losing myself in being a mom. Now listen, y'all, I'm not a mom. So I'm going to speak to this as if I'm going to speak to this in my way. She goes, it feels like a lot of responsibility. How can I be a mom and still be me and do my biz and all my things for me? And who do I be in being a mom? And how can I do it better and raise a conscious, amazing boy? That's a lot. You all, I am actually, if you guys are mothers of kids, I'm actually gonna refer you to a friend of mine. Heather Carrion Nichols is amazing. Maggie Emerson is amazing. 
um, Maya Diane, all friends of mine, all certified facilitators, all with small children. I'm gonna have you go find them on Facebook, go look at their stuff, start asking them about how they play with the access consciousness tools and being a mom, okay? I'm not even gonna try to be an expert because I'm single, I don't even have a dog. So let's just let that be what it is. All right, Sasha. Hi, Crystal, there's so much on this topic. Wow, thanks, so great. Um, she goes, I mean, us daughters and sons, proving, limiting ourselves, keeping ourselves small, not succeeding at our choices, saving, getting mad, lose, oh my God, there's so much in here. She's like, how do I throw all of this out of my life and my reality for all eternity? You guys, guess what I'm gonna talk about now? Interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Interesting point of view, I have this point of view. Okay, so this episode is for those of you guys that have mothers. If you have a mother, or you are a mother, or you have a body, interesting point of view, I have this point of view about everything is gonna start to give you so much freedom, okay? You're still proving yourself to your kids? Oh my goodness, that's a whole other call. Okay, Elizabeth, when I saw you post about this, the first thing that came to my mind was how she compares my children to me. So her mom compares her children to her and what kind of parent she is. So how do I have less reaction and alignment and agreement with her when she's basically comparing how I raised my kids to how she raised me? I'm not sure if that is a question and if that makes sense. Yeah, it's a total question. Okay, listen, y'all. Some of you had great mothers. A lot of us have cunty mothers. Let's just be honest. We have some cunty mothers in the mix. And cunty mothers are basically, they wrap judgment in I love you and I'm just trying to do what's best for you sort of things, okay? So I there's so many great things about my mom. There's so many great gifts that she gave me, but she gave a lot of the gifts in the cuntiness that she was with me. And what I mean by cuntiness is basically people that are being cunty judge you, but they make it sound like it's something else. So interesting point of view gives you the space from which to choose, but it's also like, you gotta start to look at this and go, you know, I, I had to have a lot of come to Jesus moments with me and my mom, with me in regards to my mom. Meaning there wasn't a lot that she was actually contributing to my life, you know? So she's a total gift in the way that she raised me and everything, but she was mean and she's very critical. And you know, she like she basically has one use for me, generally speaking, and that's if I can give her money. And if I can give her money, I'm pretty useful to her. And if I can't, I'm really not. So every single thing that she does with me is to the end of seeing if she can control me into giving her money. So there was a really, really, really long time where I didn't want to know all of that. This is the thing about people is that people are always just functioning from where they're functioning from. And a lot of where they're functioning from, I haven't wanted to know for a really long time. I didn't really want to know that my, where my mom was functioning from was that basic. I really wanted to believe things about her. Do you guys find yourself there at all? Like, I want to believe things about her. Now, am I saying that she didn't love me? Maybe. What does love even mean? Love's got 500 different definitions, maybe 5 million different definitions. I know that she did the best she could with the tools she had available and that she was still really mean. So what if all the things can be true about any person? And this is, I mean, this whole show, you could relate this back to you. The same is true of me. All the things are true of me. Sometimes I'm functioning from this really expanded space, very generosity of spirit. There's other times I'm functioning as cunty as anybody else, right? Like it, none of it is significant, but if you start to cut, cut off what a person is being, and you don't actually let in the information of where they're functioning from and how they're really treating you and what's really going on based on the fact that it shouldn't be this way because they are somebody in your life, that's when you're gonna get abused by that. So one of the, one of the things that I would play with is what awareness am I refusing? that I truly could be choosing, that if I would choose it, would give me total clarity and ease with this. And everything that doesn't allow that, times a godzillion, will you destroy and uncreate it all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. So for anything to stick you, you know how when you're with a person, you're like, oh, and they say that thing, and you're like, oh, I hate that thing they always do. I hate that thing. Fuck, she did it again, you know? There's somewhere in you that you've bought it. 
Somewhere in you, you've bought a lie about you. And maybe the lie is that you're a terrible mom. Maybe the lie is that you're awful. Maybe the lie is that she probably, she probably sees something about you that you can't see. And now you've got to go in and look for it in you to make sure that it's there, which means you're looking for the wrongness of you to find out where she's right. I did that forever. If, if, if my mom, who I had a lot of respect for, a lot of like, I just thought she hung the moon for so long and that slowly unraveled and now I'm just grateful for her as a being. Uh, but I had to, if she saw something, so she, if she criticized my parenting, I don't have any kids, but like if she did that and she saw something in me and I hadn't picked it up first, there, I would go looking for where she was right about me. I'd go looking for where she was right about me being wrong. So do any of you guys do that? Do you go looking for where your parent is right about you being wrong? Do you go looking for where your partner is right about you being wrong? Do you go looking for where your kids are right about you being wrong? Are you addicted to trying to find the wrongness of you? And so if that's true, it won't matter who pokes your button because anybody that pokes it is gonna be like, oh, there's a button there, you know, I'm gonna keep pressing it. So they'll just keep pressing it until you go, oh, that's just an interesting point of view that she thinks that she parents better than me. That's just an interesting point of view that she thinks she's a better mom than me than I am. What if everything she said was just interesting and cunty sometimes? Okay, that was cunty, that was judgy. Hmm. So then you have more choice. Do you see what I'm saying? Like when you're willing to see where everybody's functioning from, you just have more choice. The lie is always that we have no choice. And this thing we do with our parents is so like twisted up, right? Because we put ourselves into all kinds of no choice positions. Well, I can't say that because she's my mom. I can't not live with her because money. I can't not do this because her health. Like we put ourselves into these no choice positions with our parents and then, and then suffer and take it. But you don't have to take anything. It really doesn't matter who that person is. If they've got money to offer you down the road, if you're gonna inherit a bunch of money, there's a whole other manipulation conversation we need to have. But truly, like, if they are n mean, if they're assholes, if that's their contribution to your life, and you've just been taking it, then you might wanna look at that and go, well, what if, what if I didn't take it anymore? Like, what, what's actually possible here? What choices do I actually have here that I haven't given myself? Okay, Miss Anna Wislowska, beauty. Thank you so much for everything you do and how you show up, you're welcome. When you wrote about your mom, a question came up. How do you know what you really want in relationship with parents when it's always been based on manipulation and what I should be doing? Resentment was a bigger part of it and I can't find a space to find out what I would like to choose. Mm. You guys, if this is you and you actually, you cannot tell the difference between you and your parents and your family, you just, you just can't. I would really invite you to download what I'm calling the awareness challenge. It's the awareness challenge.com. It's this clearing from Gary Douglas and it's that what would it take for me to be willing to live the energy of what I'd like my life to be so that it could show up for me in totality and everything that doesn't allow it and all the thoughts and feelings and emotions and no sex I'm using to absolutely refuse and reject my life and the energy I'd like my life to be, I'd destroy and uncreate it all. Right, wrong, good, bad, podfuck, all my insurance, poison, beyonds. And that's the clearing statement, that weird thing. You can go to theclearingstatement.com to find out about that. But this is, this is something that goes on, you guys. And, and really why I created the Awareness Challenge as a group. It's a free group on Facebook if you wanna come play with us. We have a new challenge starting today in 11 minutes. The awareness challenge because I got that for me, you know, we, oh gosh, so many of us come in with this intense level of awareness, so much so that we can't tell the difference between what's ours or someone else's, like there isn't a separation and there's not even any language for, well, that's yours and that's not mine and that's not, you know. So everything that you are born into feels like yours. All that intensity, you know, like I was born into a really, really intense family. There was a lot of fighting. There was a lot of 
anger, rage, and fury, and hate, like all the distractor implants. There was a lot of blame and shame, regret, and guilt. I was born into a distractor implant household, y'all. <laughs> it was very intense. If you don't know what the distractor implants are, check out the book Living Beyond a Distraction. It is such a game changer. But I was also born super, 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 super aware. Like, and and that, you know, I've been playing with access consciousness tools for five years, and, and that, that conversation never gets less relevant. And I know I say that a lot because it's true. So, so you go through your life as a kid with none of this information. You're just aware, aware, aware. So you're picking up on all these ways of functioning and all these ways of being in the world, all these ways of doing relationship, all these ways of doing money, all these ways of doing family even. And it becomes the way it is. It's just the way you do family. And so as you come into these tools or any sort of like journey where you're you're attempting to create yourself you may not yet know what your reality is now the good news about your reality is that it's just a matter of continuing to ask for it to show up number one number two it changes all the time <laughs> so you don't have to go find your reality like the definition of your reality doesn't exist because your reality is like a day so you're the clouds roll over and the sun comes out and then it rains and then the trees and then the things but your reality will have an energetic sense to it. And so that's what this clearing does is it starts to pull up the sense of what's true for you that goes beyond your family. So that's what I would say for that particular question if that's something that you guys are struggling with. All right, Miss Christy. Oh my God, this is a long one, Christy. All right. Wondering how to get to a place of space when your mom continues to direct her pain to you. Isn't that fun? My mom does that too. <laughs> it's as if somewhere along the line, I become responsible for her happiness and in turn am responsible for all that went wrong in her life. Aw, she sounds so kind. I've set healthier boundaries where I no longer willingly hold it all for her. However, there's still a part of me that waits on bated breath for the next time she'll be different. She'll miraculously treat me with common decency. It's like my positive hopefulness in mankind bites harder when she continues to shoot below the belt, so to speak, and then I feel it pierce even more. All right, here's a come to Jesus moment. You guys ready? I don't know about you, but I did not want to know that my mom was mean. I didn't want to know that she was like mean. I didn't want to know that she was insane. And so she would, she, she would continue to do the mean things. She would continue to say the things that would hook me. But the only reason anything could hook me because I wasn't willing to see it all. I wasn't willing to see the gift she was in the mean that she is, that she chooses to be. I wasn't willing to see that she really didn't want to work. I wasn't willing to see that she just wanted to be taken care of. I wasn't willing to see that she only wanted to use the people around her instead of be the gift that she is. I wasn't willing to see any of that. So because I wasn't willing to see it, I functioned more on the hope that she would be the person I always dreamed she could be. Even just listening to that sentence now, I was like, wow. Hope is a, it's a utopian ideal of something that never exists. It's, nev it's never willing to consider what is. So you can't ever perceive it, you can't know it, you can't receive it. And when you can't receive what is, you can't choose based on what is. You're only ever choosing based on a fantasy of what you think should be. So that means that what is continues to stab you because you're not willing to know what's going on. So you live, and, and, and you guys, this is a big, big conversation for a lot of us. This is, a, this is a conversation that's tied into an abuse conversation, that's tied into a, like a, all the stuff that ties us in with family. And trust me, there's a lot of things to clear around this. Like, that's why I'm doing a call on it, even though one call is just as the tip, but at least with a call, we can start getting your questions and start looking at like all the, the clearings that go with that, because the energetic ties with all this stuff go like this. And when you're not willing to know that someone is abusive, then you continue to get abused by them. We don't wanna know that our mom's abusive. I didn't wanna know for a really, 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 really long time that some of the things my siblings were doing were insane. 
not, I mean, I've done plenty of insane things, but I kept reasoning and justifying that they weren't insane, that it was me, that there was something about me that was either creating that or, you know, perceiving it wrong, or I was convinced that I was incorrect. And that's where you'll kill yourself over and over. There are people that function from mean. That is how they function. And that's just how they function. And it's not wrong. Consciousness includes everything, even mean people. But are you willing to know that about the people that you care about so much? Are you willing to know everything about them? So what are you unwilling to know that if you would allow yourself to know it would give you total clarity and ease? And everything that doesn't allow that, will you destroy and uncreate it all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pod, pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. So I would say come on the call for that one because there's a lot there. So hopefully we touched on just enough. Um, so I think I am going to wrap. I, we've got four minutes left and I just want to really wrap this up. I mean, honestly, if you guys haven't caught it through the whole thing, the tool that I would give all of us like more than any other tool that I've ever used, the one that gave me the most freedom with my mom was interesting point of view. I have this point of view for literally every single interaction that we had. And I had to be really assertive with this tool for probably four years. And trust me, that's the shortcut. Because prior to that four years, I was just miserable and wanted to kill myself. My mom for me was one of those people that I cared about more than anything. Growing up basically, my dad and her got divorced when I was 13. I was the oldest. So I became her right-hand person, her primary relationship. And she, um, we did everything together. Like, you know, um, when I didn't want to go to school, so when I didn't want to go to school, we'd like go out, get a bite to eat, or we'd go get some ice cream. And then I would go to Alcoholics Anonymous meetings with her, and I went to therapy with her, and I like handled all the kids. I basically did all my mothering when I was from 12 to 20. Oh, that's not true from like four to 20. <laughs> so I remember totally vividly remember like so many moments where I would just cry and sob and sob and sob and sob and sob that I could not have the relationship with my mother that I wanted. It was heartbreaking for me. And you know, I'm dramatic and intense and, and who cares? Like there were years that I was just heartbroken. And then there were years that I didn't speak to her because I couldn't, because every time we would talk, she would try to control me. And she, she does this projection thing of her beliefs are the right beliefs and her point of view is the right point of view. And, and then, and she drills into you so that you have to either fight her or withdraw or something else. And I didn't know the something else. So I would fight her and then I would withdraw for weeks, sometimes years we didn't speak. And so when I got into access consciousness, and, and, and on top of that, you know, she's created herself really broke, really poor, really um, sick, and really like all these things. So she constantly needs. And, but it's been that way for our entire life. And she's constantly needed from her ex-husband and her mom and now us. And so that's the way she is. So with no tools in your handbook, in your thing, you just do the best you can with what you've got. And I did a lot of just not talking to her because it was too hard. And then when I did talk to her, I fought with her because I didn't want it to be that way. I wanted it to be another way. Um, but what I'm inviting you to is a different reality. And it's the reality where you choose to be something in the situation or even not totally in the situation, maybe even on the side of the situation, you choose to be something that is a different space. That space where you're fighting or you're resisting and reacting is the space where every single thing that she's being in the world, you're holding in place. So, you, so you're not actually contributing to the creation of a different reality or a different possibility. So she can't have a different choice either when you are doing this with her. And then you do separation, which is the flip side of this coin. And she doesn't have a different possibility either and neither do you. So what I am inviting all of us to is the creation of a different possibility with just being interesting point of view. And I say just, I'm saying use every single text, every single phone call, every single interaction with her, every single thing with your mom 
to go, well, interesting point of view, I have that point of view. You have that point of view. Don't say it out loud to her because then you're just being a dick. Use it for you. You are the one that's listening to these tools. You are the one that's soaking all this in. You are the one that knows there's something else available if you will choose to create it for yourself. And once you begin to be it, everything starts to get easier for everybody involved. Because when now my mom calls, and I gotta, I gotta go, but now when she calls, um, I'm just so excited. And she'll call, every time she calls me, she's like, oh, I'm like, how are you? She's like, I'm terrible. My health and my this and my that and my this. And she just tells me all the stories. And I was like, oh, cool. How are you? And I'm like, I'm so good. I'm so good. I'm so happy. She's like, oh, I'm so glad. And I'm like, well, what else is up? And now we can just talk and there's, I don't need to be unhappy because she's unhappy. I get to just be happy. She gets to have her unhappiness, which makes her happy. And everybody gets to be exactly what they're choosing, which really is the gift. So I don't have time for more questions. I'm so grateful for you guys. And if, but if this contributed, man, give this to the, give this to the friend that you know has a mom, just drives her crazy. And if you guys would like more, I'm doing one call on it. You can find it on my website, crystaljoycrawford.com. I adore you. If you wanna hop over to the Awareness Challenge group now, I'm gonna uh, drop another new challenge in there for all of us, 30 day challenge, it's gonna be amazing. Share this, like it, comment, I adore you. I'll see you next week.